Welcome to FinTech Brews and News, brought to you by Central Payments and Falls FinTech. I'm Nikki Rohde. And I'm Trent Sorby. Founders, co-founders, payments professionals, and, well, just people who love brews. This is a place to get a behind the scenes look at unique partnerships and ways to bridge the financial gap between banking, startups, and the entire FinTech industry. Whether it's a beer or coffee or something else, there's certain to be a brew in every episode. After all, how do we function in this space without it? Each episode, you're sure to take away some good stuff going on in the financial technology space. So without further ado, let's grab a brew. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of FinTech Brews and News. I'm Trent Sorby. And I'm Nikki Rohde. And uh, we are really excited today uh, to have uh, one of our friends, uh, Darius Granberry from League Swipe with us today. Darius, how are you today? I'm doing excellent. How are you doing, Trent? I'm good, except that hat you're wearing. Oh, cool. I'm not very excited about oh, that uh, as a Vikings it. fan. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna go right through it. Maybe maybe our editing guys can like somehow edit out nope. the. the Anyway, Darius, thanks for joining us today. We, we love to talk about League Swipe. Um, we love to talk uh, about what you're doing and, and watch what you're doing. Maybe to kick us, kick us off, why don't you bring the audience up to speed on, on your background, who you are, um, and really what triggered you to think about and start League Swipe, and then just kind of roll into what, what the problem is you're trying to solve. Take, take it away. Everybody's excited to hear. I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity, Trent and Nikki. You guys are family. I love false fintech. So appreciate the opportunity. Of course, I'm Darius Granberry, founder and CEO of League Swipe um, out of Chicago. Obviously, I'm a huge sports fan, but uh, outside of sports, um, I cut my teeth professionally in accounting and finance. So I uh, went to University of Illinois, got an accounting degree, became a CPA, uh, Count money. Nikki, for your benefit, that's a certified public accountant. <laughs> anyway, sorry for the interruption, but I wanted to make sure no uh, that we had this all clear. But take it, keep going. Uh, studying for the CPA, I drank plenty of IPAs, but uh, that's neither here, here nor there. Uh, I'm a CPA. <laughs> I went over to <laughs> to private equity, where I made the switch from accounting to finance. Um, I tell everybody I got into private equity through the back door by uh, running the back office. I spent a decade in uh, private equity, um, eventually becoming the CFO of a, um, it was really a startup private equity firm. We grew from one fund, $100 million under management. By the time we left, I left. Uh, we were up to a billion dollars under management, seven or eight funds under, under our management, a ton of portfolio companies. So uh, we have really grown a lot, we wore a lot of hats, um, including um, investment. I had done some investments. I moved over to the investment side. I was leading a few deals. So that's where I really uh, sort of my my entrepreneurial bug was or, or a fire was relit. Um, I had a lot of conversations with entrepreneurs building some real cool things. And, um, you know, I really saw that innovation and creation was happening at that level, at the founder level, at the um, you know, business owner level. And I really always wanted to jump across the table and do that. Um, and about five years ago, I made that plunge. I made that leap and decided to follow my passion. Um, and again, I'm super passionate about sports. Um, my professional expertise is in money movement. So try to figure out a cool way to marry those passions together. Um, and League Swipe was born. Okay, that's cool, Darius, and, and that's a great background, and it's it's really unique because so many times as we spend um, as we spend time with founders, we're used to spending time with founders who come from a data engineering background or something like that. So somebody to come from the finance world, somebody who's invested in early stage companies, um, you're a very unique founder. Uh, as you as you look at Leak Swipe and you think about what led you, or as you said, the entrepreneurial spirit hit you. Uh, Tell us about League Swipe. Tell us what you're trying to solve. Uh, tell us about the industry, uh, and then really just pick up on where you are in the life cycle of League Swipe. Great question. Um, you know, as I alluded to earlier, uh, I truly hit that point where I was trying to decide how I could best utilize the skills I attained um, over 20 years of working 
in corporate America and do something that I could really enjoy, something that I could be proud of, something that me, my family, and friends would use. Um, now, again, I must admit I'm one of those those guys that love sports, and when I couldn't play sports at a high level anymore, I did what most people did do, and that's play fantasy sports, right? Live out our dreams through <laughs> other folks who can play it professionally. So um, I was that guy that was in nine, ten different leagues every year, and because I'm the CPA guy, I had to manage the money. So I'm always the CP, the the commissioner of those leagues trying to figure out who paid how they paid and how much they paid so um i had gotten older i had kids i was married at the time and i'm like i really don't have the time to be managing you know all of these different leagues and dealing with collective money from from friends and family and all of that so i wanted to give up some of those leagues but as i looked around at each league it sort of represented a phase in my life, a time in my life, whether it was friends that I went to school with um, during high school or college or people I played basketball with in rec leagues, like they all were representative of a time in my life that I really enjoyed. And this was the only time in, throughout the year that we would communicate and we would talk. So I really didn't want to give it up. So I sort of looked around for solutions that could help me manage these relationships a little bit better. And then all honesty, everything that I found was was trash. It was inflexible. It wasn't what I, you know, what I needed and what I expected, given where technology is. Um, so I decided that I would tackle tackle it on my own. I'll figure out how to build a solution that we could use, um, and that just opened up like a door and a window into a world of payments and banking and money transmission and regulatory compliance that to the average person would scare them away, right? Um, but again, I relied on my professional expertise in moving money mm -hmm. and managing regulation from going from unregistered with the SEC to being fully registered with the SEC and managing some of that, um, you know, the regulatory burden related to that. So um, I didn't see it outside the scope of possibility um, to build a company and manage a team that could solve for this problem. So League Swipe has truly grown. It's grown from just managing how people collect, store, and transfer funds for fantasy sports to um, how do you collect, store, and transfer funds for groups of folks who bet on anything from March Madness to Super Bowl to Kentucky Derby. How are you doing that in a fully compliant way, transparent, and fun way? We're managing that, um, and we've grown – even from there to become a digital wallet that aggregates how people pay to play games online. How do we get people playing these games more quickly and pay faster when they win? So that's our overarching goal. That's where we're, we're at now, and that's why partnerships like Central Payments make so much sense. We're excited about where we're headed. You, you are in one of the fastest growing um, industries out there right now. It is unbelievable um, the amount of activity going on in the legalized sports betting and fantasy, daily fantasy space. Uh, where do you, it, it seems like it's changing almost by the day. How do you stay up and how do you feel like you're ahead of the curve and where do you want to, where do you see the space going and, and where are you trying to catch up? I mean, I, I shouldn't say catch up, but wh what are the things you're trying to do to kind of stay on top of the curve and stay out ahead of the rest uh, as this industry yeah. just continues yeah. to take no. off? I stay plugged in. I've been plugged in from, from day one. I mean, I think the people who, who understood sports betting um, globally knew the impact it would have in the U.S. once PAPSA was repealed. Uh, several years ago. Um, I think a lot of people were focused on sort of the front end um, user experience, creating games and creating sports books, um, where I think opportunity existed and still exists. And where we're trying to tap in is creating the infrastructure ne necessary to support all of this growth, right? Um, legalized sports betting is here to stay. It's uh, legal in 30 some odd uh, states, including uh, plus DC right now. Um, the future is online betting, right? It is 
mobile first. Um, and that's where we're spending a lot of our time. How do we make people who um, participate in online sports betting, how do we make their lives more easy? Um, there's a lot of onboarding friction. There's a lot of customer retention issues. I think we can come in and solve for that in a really, really cool and innovative way that is uh, truly user first, right? Because these are my people. Like I, part of our ethos is, you know, how do we make how do we make this, you know, build this company, um, keeping the customer first and understanding their pain points and delivering a solution that speaks specifically to them. Um, again, there's solutions that exist. There's legacy companies that exist. But, um, you know, I think the relationships that they've established with the current consumers are somewhat combative. So I think there's a real opportunity for an infrastructure and solution, um, an infrastructure solution to come in and build something that speaks specifically to this audience. And that's exactly what we're doing. Um, and like I said, online is, is where it's headed. 86%, I think, of all betting activity happened online. So there are states that are in person now that are transitioning to online. So I think there's an absolute need to make sure that you have the right infrastructure pieces in place to ensure um, things like responsible betting, KYC, AML, um, proper money transmission, and geolocation types of uh, requirements are met satisfactorily and um, I think that's where definitely leads white kid uh, you know stand out and be a leader in that space hey Darius we love everything that you're working on and I, I want to rewind a little bit of time it's only been about six months but man times are flying the how'd you hear about false fintech how did we get connected you remember that I do I do uh, Luke my man Luke uh, was my first point of contact uh, we met at an event called Midwest Tech Connect, and Luke was an awesome, I mean, his engagement and his enthusiasm was um, infectious. So I knew that we would have a relationship no matter what. Um, I, I had never heard of false fintech, but um, I was looking at the time for a payment um, partner that was thinking sort of outside the box, and that was... Um, ready to innovate and, and move with the speed of technology and, and embrace fintech. And he started talking about, you know, Falls Fintech and the relationship with Central Payments, and it really sparked my interest. So we had a couple conversations. Um, at that time, um, we had a beta um, solution in the market, and we were getting some good traction. But we knew um, in order to scale long term, we needed a better um, banking partner. So as we, Luke and I talked about, again, central payments, and it just became a no-brainer that this was something that I needed to pursue. Um, I love the fact that it was a small cohort um, uh, solely focused on the payments industry. Um, and that was something different than all of the other accelerators that I explored at the time. So Luke, thank you for his persistence. Um, he continued to reach out to me um, and I ended up applying. And thankfully I became a part of cohort four, which was like the super highlight of my 2021. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. And, and you made such a, a great addition to that cohort. And, and you know, man, uh, thanks for the shout out on Luke. He absolutely kills it. And you're exactly right. Even, even after we run cohorts and after the program ceases we have an alumni connection process and so you've obviously um, been the beneficiary of some of that too where you know luke's constantly plugging league swipe to this venture capital company or league swipe to this place or that place so has that been fruitful for you absolutely absolutely i think uh, before we jumped on i made a comment that i don't think a week goes by that i'm not having a meeting that uh, was the result of a luke introduction and that remains true, like months after the end of the cohort, um, his willingness to connect and um, has been awesome. Um, the Slack channel, the communication via Slack, his, his um, availability has been awesome. The entire group has been awesome. I mean, just to reach out and say, hey, this is something I'm dealing with. 
or have you heard of this group? Do you have a connection there? Just that availability just, I mean, it's invaluable, right? You were in cohort four because not only were you looking for an accelerator, but I always like to th look at it the other direction too. We knew um, where online sports betting was going and we saw you know the billions of dollars that that is moving um and now in a in a very legalized environment and we said look we how do we get into that space we're not sure you know there's you know it still carries the a little bit of a of a tag like oh, okay it's gambling it's gambling even though it's legalized maybe we don't want to jump into this you know one of the reasons we got really excited about league swipe um was we said look it's it's an opportunity for us to learn a little bit too along the way and uh i think you you're a great example of you know you you were needing or looking for an accelerator and and we knew we needed to be in this space that you're attacking and being such a an early leader in um, and that's why that's why I think ultimately it works so well for both of us because we are we are all in on this space and it's got a lot to do with you and League Swipe uh, because we're we're learning along the way. That's the important part. Yeah, no, I I couldn't agree more. Um, that was one of the things that I really enjoy about being part of the cohort was the sort of group like learning dynamic. Like we were learning together as we grew like the whiteboarding set route, how we make it work, um, you know, what resources do we need? Um, and let's see if we can, um, you know, pull those resources together and best utilize what we know to get the job done. So that was extremely, like, valuable. Um, I mean, that's how I was, I was brought up, and that's the way that I've been running my company is let's figure it out. Like, this is new territory for everyone. So I want to be plugged in with folks who recognize that, recognize the opportunity, and uh, have a willingness to stretch um, to capitalize on it. So. Absolutely. What uh, Tell us about where League Swipe is today. What do you what do you got cooking right now? Where are you in relation to... Um, the day when I can go out and download that app um, because I'm always the one stuck being the commissioner too. So, um, it's cause he's the old guy. Yeah. They <laughs> trust with the oldest guy, but I mean, when, tell us about where you are in the life cycle. We're working on partnerships now with a few gaming operators that will, uh, utilize league swipe as their payment vehicle. Um, which will be awesome. It allows us to onboard, a, um, you know, a ton of, a, of additional league swipe users so that we can leverage those relationships moving forward. So we're super excited about that. Take that two steps farther when you talk about those partnerships. Can you give an example of, um, I'm not sure if you can release names yet, but talk about what that functionally means for League Swipe. Because for, for a lot of the, the platforms he's talking to, he, League Swipe is, is the piece they don't have. So mm -hmm. I, I don't mean to steal your thunder, Darius, to, uh, to take it away, but. Yeah, no, yeah. You know, it's funny as we were building this for consumers, um, and becoming the trusted money mover in the space, we had tons of platforms reach out to us and say, hey, look, um, we're looking to, um, you know, monetize and move money on our platform, but we didn't realize all the regulatory hurdles that we had to overcome, right, from KYC, AML, money management, all of those good things. And they were like, that's not what we want to do. <laughs> we want to be a game operator and create great games and great user expenses, but Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do that. So we saw a great opportunity, yeah, yeah, to bridge the gap in compliance and payments to service this niche. So uh, we had operators say, hey, look, we're building out the user experience. Can you come in and power payments on our platform? And that's exactly what we're doing. So we have groups like um, uh, Fantasy Boss out in Texas, who is going to be a partner of ours, who is um, developing a cool way of uh, managing fantasy uh, football leagues in the future. We'll take over the entire payment process for them. Um, that's including all the onboarding, KYC, AML, ledger management on their behalf. Uh, we have the requ requisite expertise. We have the partnerships to do that effectively. Um, and that's what the, the service and the value add that we're adding, that we're offering to, you know, the dozens or so platforms that we have lined up to be partners in the upcoming months. Because it's a really, a, it's a huge void. And I think they probably, the platforms probably underestimated a bad payment experience um, during enrollment or payout, a bad experience, a clunky experience, 
Um, they gone. They are gone, man. You're exactly right. And so, you know, I think they both said, look, we'll, we'll make the coolest app to be able to manage a fantasy league, et cetera. But you have a bad payment experience and it's going to be hard to get them back. And I think in comes league swipe um, to, to fill that void. Frictionless play, fast pay. If we can deliver that to our uh, customers, we win. <laughs> Anything else that, as you're thinking about what's next for League Swipe, any advice for um, other founders that might be coming through Falls Fintech or partnering with Central Payments? What are some lessons that you've learned in this process? Because you come at this thing with some serious chops. I mean, you're you're not the typical founder that we bump into, like I was saying earlier in the broadcast. So you, it's hard to say it, but I mean, you're you're like an elder uh, as it relates to a to, as it relates to an entrepreneur and a startup. Well, I know I'm an elder, Nikki. I'll just finish the joke for you. Yep, thanks. Um, but I think you know you're a, you're a unique founder. So, uh, what what advice would you have? Be coachable, regardless of your experience. Uh, again, I'm a huge sports fan, and I played a lot of sports growing up. I wasn't the biggest, strongest, and fastest, but um, my coaches knew that I was paying attention and that I would follow directions well. Um, I think that's the biggest advice I would give folks who may have some experience, who may be going out to do something a little bit outside of their comfort zone. Um, Falls Fintech is, fa is family, so it's okay to show vulnerability and, and say you don't know. I mean... <laughs> One of the things that I have learned being an elder, Trent, is don't be afraid of what you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, and equally, don't be afraid of the things that you don't know. And I think Falls Fintech does a great job of making you feel comfortable expressing the things you don't know and then filling the void and trying to help you um, understand and learn and uh, build your, you know, set you up for success. So embrace that. That's sort of hard to come by where as founders, we're always sort of expected to put on the front like we have everything figured out. We don't. And it's OK. Uh, partner with folks that can move you through and help you along this journey. And it you're. Yeah, he's saying he's speaking your love language uh, here. You I mean, it's like you oh. it's like you were holding a cue card for him. Um, That's it. Yeah, so uh, that's great advice. It really is. And, and look, we wish you a ton of success. We are 100% behind you. Um, this is a product. It's important to us. And your success uh, has a lot to do with our success. So we wish you all the luck. And uh, everybody, if you get a chance, uh, go visit Darius's website and his LinkedIn and all of his socials. He's a fun, he's a fun follow, by the way. Awesome. So um, please spend some time uh, and learn more about League Swipe. Thank you all. I Thanks, appreciate Darius. it. There you have it. We hope you enjoyed this episode of FinTech Brews and News. Keep up with all the content and cool stuff happening at Falls FinTech and Central Payments by checking out our website, our YouTube channel, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss out on our next episode. I'm Nikki Rohde. And I'm Trent Sorby. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers.